Today we're going to discuss some clinical cases that uh, are challenging when dealing with the dental dam. We're going to talk a little bit about whitening procedures and using the dental dam. It is recommended that a dam be used for in-office whitening procedures for protection of the gingival tissues. Before applying the dam, though, you need to check the patient's smile. You know, some people have a broader smile than others, and you always want to isolate at least one tooth distal to where the smile line ends. This way, you'll know that you will not have any line of demarcation. <laughs> if a person has a really broad smile, you want to isolate probably a first premolar to first premolar. And sometimes you even have to go to the first molar on each side. You know, people have different smiles. And so you always want to make sure that, that you get a, a nice result and it doesn't hurt to go that extra tooth in your isolation. So uh, I also recommend uh, using wedge it cord. In, in our, uh, our clinical case today, we, we're using wedge it cord to isolate at the ends of our, of our isolation instead of using a clamp. It's more comfortable to the patient. And you notice we went, uh, well, on this side, we went ended up at the premolar. We went a little extra here on that side. We're also using a framed flexidam. What's nice about that is the frame is integrated, and you don't, it's much more comfortable with the patient, and, and it's much easier and expedites the procedure. So that um, is one thing. You want to make sure that your dam is, is properly inverted, and... Again, to make sure that you get a good inversion. Now, see that canine here is not really very well inverted. So you want to go back in here using your dental floss and invert this such as this. There you go. And cross it to get that to invert. There we go. Now, the other thing, too, uh, that can be recommended is that you can pull back the dental dam tissue and place some opal, excuse me, uh, some uh, Oroseal dental dam caulking material along the gingival surface. What that does, it adds additional protection to the patient's tissues. In the past, we were taught to ligate each and every tooth, which is very time-consuming, but... Uh, there are techniques now of isolating with uh, using what we call a running ligation or a shoelace ligation. I'm going to show you how to use the running ligation. Uh, using a piece of dental floss, you're going to start back here. And you want to have more of the floss on the facial. And pulling it through the distal contact, leaving a little bit here, and you're going to come in and back, and as you're working with this, you're going to tuck your floss along the gingival surfaces. This is going to help retract the dental dam, and you're going to come in here. And, it, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to retract your tissues. And you continue, basically you continue throughout the whole arch like this and retracting as you go along. And then I'm going to run out of floss, so I'm going to come back in the other direction. Now you're going to come back in the other direction, this way. Again, as you're working with this, you're, you're tucking in the floss as you're working with this. So when you come back, you're getting the facials. So one direction you get the linguals and the other direction you're getting the facial retraction. And what that does is it retracts the gingival tissues and the dental dam out of the way. So you continue back like this. Again, you know, tucking as you go along. 
and retracting as you're going along. Now, on a patient, you're going to get a little better results because on a mannequin, the, the tissues are, are, you know, <laughs> rubberized. So you're not going to get, you know, the effect. But the idea is by doing that, then you're going to, then you can ligate off at the end using a surgical tie knot and just tie it off. And then what that does is it allows you to get a good, effect of your whitening without having a line of demarcation along the gingival surfaces and again you just gently tuck it down in there as you're working with it so so when you remove it then you simply this is why it's called a running ligation because it just goes off like this so it it basically is much easier than tying off each and every tooth. So that's the running ligation. Now the shoelace ligation, the way that works, is you take equal lengths of your floss, and you're going to have equal lengths on both sides, and it's like a shoelace. You're going to come in here and run your floss that way, and then come the facial goes to the lingual. And then you tuck it, you know, as you're working with this. Okay. Now, then, are you keeping a little bit of tension, it looks like? Oh, yeah, a little yeah. tension yeah. on that. And so then my lingual goes to the facial, and my facial floss goes to the lingual. Just like a shoelace, you know, when you're when you're doing your shoelaces. And basically, you know, you're as you're working with this. Again, as I was saying, on a patient, you get a little better results. Um, and you're tucking this down, putting a little tension on it, and tucking it down as you're working with this. So for your personal preference, do you have a preference of either one of those? You know, it depends on the... Um, uh, the tooth structure and also the eruption pattern. Um, some um, people, I find that the running ligation works better for me, and others, I find that the shoelace does. So you, you, you could try, you know, you try the one. If you don't feel like you're getting the uh, benefit that you want, you try the other technique. Uh, but again, uh, with a, a person, you know, you've got that gingival sulcus, and, and you're, uh, you have a little tension, and as you're working with, with this, uh, you'll you'll get uh, some pretty good results. The, the purpose, of course, is to retract the gingival tissues and the dental dam so that uh, you're not getting that line of demarcation. So that's the difference between the two. And, and again, you would work your way all the way to the end and, and tie it off as well. And, and so those are called the running ligation and the shoelace uh, ligation. I will now demonstrate the four-hole general field isolation. This is probably the quickest way to isolate for a whitening procedure. It provides some protection uh, of the patient's tissues, uh, but um, not as much as you would get in the traditional isolation. So the idea is, is you want to make four holes so you can mark it such as this. And you come in and punch your dental dam. All right, so the idea is you're going to make a slit uh, between the area where you're going to be placing your whitening material. So this is how it looks. Uh, we're gonna isolate here at the premolar. We're gonna use the wedge of cord trick to get this in. How that's done is we're using dental floss to pass the, the dental dam through the contact first, making a little loop. And we're going to put our wedge of cord through the loop like this. And then we're going to pull our wedge of cord through the contact, letting go of one end by pulling the other end through, just like that. I call that the wedge cord trick. And you can trim your wedge cord up a little bit. There you go. So we're gonna go here to the other side, and we're gonna go to our first premolar, 
floss in approximately, making our little loop to the lingual, such as this. There we go. And getting our wedge cord, folding it over, and we're going to pull and let go of one end, just like that. All right, so what we're doing here, we're going to have mesial dam on the premolars, and everything else is going to be in the slit. Some people call this a slit dam. I call it general field. But basically, it's the same thing. So we're going to do place our interceptal dam on the mesial here. There we go. Almost. Sometimes you just have to pass it through several times. All right, so once your dental dam is through the contact, now you can lay in some of the uh, oral seal dental dam caulking in here, or uh, some people like to use um, that opal dam to, to put along the tissues and just roll the dental dam under like this. So it does protect the oral cavity from the medicaments that you're using for whitening. You can place a little bit of a, a, a cotton, um, well, cotton roll might not stay very well, but like a, a two by two and um, just kind of, you know, place it so that it kind of covers this area. Um, the thing is, is if you had an interceptal dam here on the canine and on each canine, that would close this up just a little bit more and you would have a little bit more protection. So essentially, the more interdental dam you have, the little bit more protection you get, you won't have such a wide gap in here. But um, you can uh, use uh, the opal dam in here, if you want, along the gingival area, and just making sure that you've got this retracting. Now see here, probably I, I would have gone to the second premolar because when you go to, to do this uh, whitening right here, you're going to run into a, a little interference with the dental dam. So I would have probably go back just a little bit further. So that is another option. Uh, some individuals prefer doing something like that because it is a little bit quicker than having to deal with the interceptal dental dam material.